Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Hope you're doing well today. Got another episode of How Much to Keep on Tap. You guys know the drill by now. We take a look at an outgoing Seahawks free agent. We try to determine what the market will be for him based off of other similar players who signed contracts in previous off seasons. And we basically try to decide, are we willing to keep player X for price Y? Uh, this will be the last player of big significance to discuss in this series. Next, we're going to start going towards the players who are a little more, you know, they're, they're the uh, smaller fish in the pond. They're going to be a little cheaper. They could be a lot cheaper. Some of them are going to fall through and be lucky to get a contract at all. But these guys, no, they're going to get paid. Um, we already went over Everett, Brown, Reed, and now we're going over Quandre Diggs, who's very interesting. He made it a lot more interesting when he tragically broke his what was it, his ankle? I think it ended up being his ankle in the final game of the season. Uh, before that injury, I think I would have said that he may very well have gotten $13 million a year from somebody. Now I'm not so sure. But even without that injury, I'm not so sure because there are some things about Quandre that kind of make him hard to compare, and it's hard to know how much somebody's going to value him. But let's do the best we can. Quandre Diggs, since he got to Seattle in... 2019, or midway through the 2019 season, he's been excellent. Uh, he just turned uh, 29 recently, so age is not a huge concern yet, but we're getting there. And since he got here, he has been the main guy on the defense who takes the ball away. He's got three interceptions in five games in 2019, and he's had 10 in the following two years. Durable. Did not miss any games to injury until, well, he got injured in the last game in 2021. Uh, he did miss a couple games after he got traded here in 2019, but other than that, it was clean. 13 interceptions over 38 games when I don't know if the rest of the team combined has that many interceptions. It's probably pretty close. And over his stint here, he's also been really solid in coverage overall. The last uh, two years, he's allowed 324 and 406 yards in coverage. Um, three touchdowns total in coverage, and I think one of those was not really on him. I think the one they gave him for 2021 was on Jordan Brooks. So, the dude has been a legitimate rock star since he got here. We give up very few big plays. Even PFF came around on him eventually. They gave him a grade for this most recent season of 71.6, marking him as a good, very good, or, well, I'd say a very solid starter. And that's where the debate starts. But here's the thing about Quandre Diggs that makes it hard. Other than playing over the top, other than taking away big plays, other than kind of being a roamer, um, you know, the last line of defense, he doesn't do a ton else. What I mean by that is since Quandre Diggs has gotten to Seattle, he's been sent on a blitz five times. Five times out of probably 2,000 plus snaps might be 2,500 plus. Actually, yeah, I think it is right around 2,500 snaps. So he doesn't really do any of that. And since he got into Seattle, you can also see that he has one tackle for loss in those roughly two and a half years. One tackle for loss. So he's not one of those safeties that comes up and makes big plays in the run game. He's not one of those safeties who's going to blitz and get to the quarterback. He's mostly just a guy for coverage, for taking away big plays, for protecting the defense over the top. When you compare it to other safeties, you find safeties that do more. So those safeties, even though they're not as good at Quandre, at what Quandre does, they do more, so they probably get paid more. That's what makes this hard. But anyway, let's try to figure this out. So we're going to the safety list. We're sorting by um, average annual value. Jamal Adams, he's not in Jamal Adams' uh, universe right now. Harrison Smith, Justin Simmons, Buda Baker, Eddie Jackson. We're, we're just going to blow through some of these guys. Clearly, these guys have a more sterling reputation, and they just do a lot more than a Quandary Diggs does. They're not going to get paid. Uh, Quandary Diggs is not going to get paid like these guys, right? Kevin Bird, Eddie Jackson, Landon Collins. We're not there yet. Let's get down to Honey Badger. Take a look at what he got. And see if we can start drawing a line here. Start finding a decent comparison. So Honey Badger got this 
14 million bucks a year after 2018. 2018, what did he do? He was a Houston Texan, uh, played every game, two interceptions, eight pass deflections, three sacks, almost 90 tackles, five tackles for loss. Coverage numbers, they were, eh, I mean, not, not too great, right? Like, got targeted 80 times as a safety. I know he played more strong safety, but still, as a safety, getting targeted that much is a little bit of an issue. 66 completion percentage, almost nearly 600 yards, five touchdowns allowed, QB rating allowed, almost 99. But um, whatever he loses in coverage, he does have... To a certain extent, it's covered by the fact that he's a more effective blitzer. He blitzed a lot. So, I don't think we're there yet, but we're not that far away, if you really take a look at this, right? Like, Honey Badger, yeah, he does more than Quandre, but Quandre does what he does probably better than Honey Badger, right? Uh, Honey Badger, by the way, had a PFF grade of about 78 in 2018, so this is where things get hard, right? Because we're just trying to figure out, okay... Obviously, Honey Badger does more stuff than Quandre does, but Quandre does what he does. Do, what he does, he does better than anything Honey Badger does. So we're already at an interesting comp, but I don't think we're there yet. So let's keep going. Go into Devin McCourty. And it's not ideal because McCourty signed uh, this contract when he was a decent chunk older than Quandre is now. But taking a look at Devin McCourty, who got $11.5 million a year for two years you will see a player who, uh, well, when did he sign that? Excuse me. Uh, yeah, okay, after 2019. So 2019, played in every game, five interceptions, seven pass deflections, 58 tackles, um, no tackles for loss, never really a guy to come up and make tackles in the run game for a loss, and not a big blitzer either. If you take a look at what he did in 2018, it's very Quandre. Like, he, he did blitz more than Quandre, but once he basically blitzed once a game on average, but it was his coverage numbers that were the main draw, right? Like 33 targets, 61% completion, 220 yards, two touchdowns. Good. Uh, this is roughly Quandre-like. We're, we're certainly in range at the very least, right? And McCourty's PFF grade this year was 80.7, which, yeah, that's, that's better. That's better than Quandre. But we... We can definitely have a debate over who deserved to get paid more. I know Quandre's... Now, Quandre is coming off a major injury, but <clears throat> regardless, he's younger. I don't think that injury is going to derail his career. It could affect it, but probably not in a drastic way immediately. Okay, let's uh, keep going here. Uh, John Johnson, uh, strong safety. I'm going to skip him for the moment. Uh, Marcus May and Marcus Williams signed one-year deals. I'm going to pass on that for a second. Jordan Poyer, though. 19.5 million over two years, so about 10, just shy of 10 million a year after 2019. What did he do in 2019 to earn that money? Uh, started all 16 games, two picks, three pass deflections, forced fumbles, three, over 100 tackles. So he is somebody who gets a little more involved in that kind of stuff than Quandre. So it's another player who does more than Quandre, but if you take a look at his 2019 coverage numbers, you know, five touchdowns, almost 70% completion allowed. It's uh, it's overall not bad, but QB rating is through the roof. And he's not doing, and he is doing a good, I'm sorry, he is doing a good chunk of blitzing, granted, having a little bit of success as a blitzer. Uh, PFF grade was for this year 74.2. So it's a, it's a debate, right? What do you value more? So, as you can see, the safety market gets pretty murky with some of this stuff. There's a lot of stuff that we can't really know about just looking at even advanced metrics, right? There's a lot of stuff in terms of, like, a fit. And before I go any further, I want to say that's one thing that could happen with Quandre Diggs here. What he does is so narrow, there are going to be some teams that might go, uh, I don't want a safety who's that one-dimensional. I don't want a safety who's only known for taking away big plays, only plays over the top only basically is the last line of defense. So if there's anything that could allow us to keep Quandre, it would probably be that. That depresses his value and we're able to bring him back for cheaper than I expect. But as you can see, we've just looked at a list of players. One guy makes less than 10, the other guy makes 14 million. It's really hard to say who's actually better and who's actually more valuable. 
Uh, continuing down the list, we have Jimmy Ward, who in, after 2019 signed a $9.5 million a year, year deal with the Niners. What did he do in 2019 to earn that contract? He did some pretty nice stuff. He, he, only, he missed three games, no interceptions, eight passes defensed, one sack, 65 tackles, but his, uh, his uh, coverage numbers are clean. He gave up less than 170 yards in coverage, barely getting targeted. He got targeted about twice a game, a little more than twice a game. He only gave up like less than a completion and a half per game. So yeah, the coverage was pretty clean, but this is another guy. This is another good example of a guy who did not do a whole lot of blitzing. Not uh, actually, ironically, after he signed this contract, he started doing it a little bit more. But this is a roughly Quandre-like guy. I think we're starting to get in... I, I think we're pretty... Well, I'm going to even say we're pretty well entrenched in this territory. Uh, his PFF grade was amazing in 2019, 84.2. But overall, I'm looking at this and I am thinking to myself, I think we found some pretty good comps here. So we're, we're, we're in the right money territory here. And if you go down another notch to Adrian Amos who signed a $9 million a year deal uh, after 2018. I don't really like going back to 2018, but I do want to take a look at this. In 2018, for the Bears, he played every game, two interceptions, nine pass deflections, a sack, 73 tackles. His coverage numbers overall were pretty good. He, um, he got targeted quite a bit, but only 61% completion, less than 300 yards, two touchdowns. QB rating allowed is close to what Quandre was at this year. But he did not blitz very much at all. So PFF grade 82.9, 83 almost. So that's really good. But when you account for the fact that the cap has gone up too, I think we're pretty much there. Let's look at one more name, but I think we've kind of gotten into the right territory here. Uh, one more guy I want to look at real quick is Rayshon Jenkins, who signed a $8.75 million contract with the uh, uh, Jaguars, with the Jaguars after a rookie deal on the uh on the uh i think it was the chargers and what he did to earn that contract if you take a look here you have uh rayshon jenkins he had a 15 game season two interceptions four passes defensed 84 tackles so again he's a guy who gets a little more involved in other parts of the defense than just protecting the deep area coverage numbers are okay pretty good um, gets targeted a decent chunk, but overall, I'd say you would probably take this. Doesn't, didn't do a ton of blitzing, did a little more than Quandre, but not a ton. And his PFF grade was about 69. So basically, I think we're in the right territory here. It's, it's a wide, there's a lot of room for things to go up or down a little bit based off little things that are really hard for anybody to know about, right? But clearly, I think we've gone too far with Rayshon Jenkins. But if you're talking about guys like Jimmy Ward, I think you're in the right area. But Jimmy Ward wasn't really a guy who got a lot of interceptions. Jimmy Ward was a guy who uh, was great in coverage, but he didn't get picks. Kind of like Earl at the end when he started getting those really bad hands. Um, I would say that somewhere between Devin McCourty and Jordan Poyer is probably where you're looking at. But Quandre did just have a major injury. So that's got to affect him somewhat. I think that's going to depress his offers at least some. So I am going to say that Quandre Diggs' contract, when he hits the market this offseason, should be somewhere around three years, 29 to 30 million. I'll, I'll make it a nice round number, say three years, 30 million. I think that injury probably took away the possibility of that getting up to 40, but I think it still gets to 30. Am I willing to pay him that? No, I can't do it. I, he's great. He's awesome, but I need to spend that money somewhere else. For me to be willing to do that, you got to come down to like three for 24. And three for 24 would put him in the P, uh, money per year amount comparable to Malcolm Jenkins, who signed that deal when he was 32. Uh, it would put him below a guy like a Rayshon Jenkins, who I already compared him to and think that the comparison just isn't really strong for Rayshon. So he can probably get more, but if things break this offseason in such a way that you can get digs for three for 24, I would probably do it. But I think he gets three for 30, and I would 
I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. That's my projection on Quandre Diggs' free agency.